From the Old Testament, there exists an interesting story that details the mercy of the God from these scriptures. You may have heard of the expressions, God is good, or God is a merciful God, and the story of Jonah appears to be a clear example of this. Jonah, who was a prophet of God, is called one day to go to the city of Nineveh, a place that had become notorious for its warlike people. Nineveh and its king were driven by conquest, constantly invading and expanding their lands, demonstrating greed and violence as they moved to take over all that which lay before them. There would certainly come a point where Nineveh's expansion would lead them to the doorstep of Israel, where Jonah resided, much as the God-fearing people did, who worshipped God in all his glory. The people of Nineveh, meanwhile, worshipped what writers of the Old Testament described as heathen gods, and were people who were riddled with sin. It's understood that it is with this reason that God called Jonah and told him to go to Nineveh and preach, telling them that he would destroy their entire city. In a way, you can see signs of this God's merciful nature, that he would even give the people of Nineveh a warning that he was going to destroy their city. Given that the people of Nineveh were described as a harsh and warlike people, it's interesting that this god would actually seek to warn them at all, and shows us that anyone, even the people of Nineveh, were perhaps redeemable in God's eyes, that he would not outright obliterate them. But Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh. After all, he'd heard all the tales about them, and he didn't want to march into their city, preaching about God of all things. Why, it would certainly get him killed. But it appears fear was not the reason for his inclination. Jonah just flat out didn't like the people of Nineveh, because they were an enemy of his home of Israel, and it can be seen here how despite receiving the wisdom from his god, Jonah is blinded by his own earthly viewpoints, to see the grander scheme of God's plan. He not only decides not to act out on God's direction, but goes as far as to sail in the opposite direction of Nineveh, and head towards the city of Tarshish. But during this time, he put the order of God from his mind, and forgot all about Nineveh, and what he'd been asked to do until a great storm descended upon his ship. His crewmates grew concerned, although despite the vengefulness of the storm, and the crashing of the waves, and the terrible downpour of hard rain, they had Jonah with them, a prophet of God himself. Why, all Jonah had to do was talk to God, as he was known for doing, and he could have this whole situation straightened out. However, they didn't know of the mission that God had set out for Jonah, nor were they aware that this voyage was actually him running away from God and the responsibility that had been set upon him. So you see, Jonah couldn't talk to God, because if he did, then God would immediately have found him heading in the opposite direction, defying him. Little did Jonah know though, that the storm sent upon him was indeed sent by his God, and that this whole encounter was kind of like his punishment, which he soon came to realise. Also realising that the fate of the crew aboard the ship was in jeopardy, Jonah actually performs an act of selflessness and heroic, for he tells them that the only way to stop the storm is to cast him from the ship. Reluctant to commit a man to certain death, the crew deliberate on this before ultimately conceding to Jonah's reason, and do indeed throw him overboard. Not a moment after Jonah hits the water, the storm began to clear, and while the men sailed on, Jonah began to sink. But a huge fish, some say a whale, emerged in the waters and proceeded to swallow Jonah whole. It's understood that this fish was actually sent by God to save Jonah from drowning and allowed him an opportunity to sit inside this creature, devoid of all other human contact and luxuries, so that he might ponder and repent on not fulfilling what his God had asked him to. Jonah was stuck here for three days before his God had the fish throw him up on none other in the shores of Nineveh. By this, it can be deduced that no matter how hard one tries to avoid their fate, if one can conceive such a thing, fate will always be realised by some way or another. In the case of Jonah, he believed that he could escape his fate, or God's will, by sailing in the other direction of Nineveh. But through these divine scenarios, it becomes clear that he had merely postponed the inevitable. Some believe that this is a sign that their God's plan is undeniable and that no matter what happens, his will shall be. Having repented and realised the error of his ways, or at least that he cannot overcome God's infinite power, 
Jonah heads into Nineveh and begins to warn the city that it will soon be destroyed in no fewer than 40 days. So struck by Jonah's message, the people began to fall to their knees in the honour of his God. From the richest to the poorest and the strongest to the weakest, all were humbled and accepted Jonah's God as their own. Even the king himself was noted as shedding his royal clothes and adorning a sackcloth before sitting down in the dust, abandoning his former ways. Jonah had completed his quest, and so in 40 days his God did arrive, as promised, to destroy the city. But Jonah's God saw that the people of Nineveh had indeed changed their ways, and were authentic about it too. They conceded before God's power, and the threat of their destruction had been enough to get them to relinquish their old ways and accept him, and only him, as their God. It's here we see the great example of this God's mercy, for he changes his mind and decides not to destroy Nineveh, given that they had reformed. It shows us that this God is capable of forgiveness, and that he treats those who embrace him, even those of foreign lands and those who had committed past sins, with compassion and clemency. To Jonah though, this was an absolute kick in the teeth. He'd gone through all of that ordeal to bring God's message about destruction, and then in the end, God didn't follow through. The people of Nineveh were all very much alive, the walls of their city still very much intact, and Jonah was not very pleased with it all. He grew angry and bitter towards God, and stormed out of the city to the harsh desert to sulk. Once more we see his God's compassion, as he grows a vine over Jonah in the thick of the desert to shield him from the sun. But then the next day, he also sends a worm to destroy the vine, leaving Jonah exposed to the elements, an example of the old term, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away, or that the Lord has compassion, but if you are not grateful, he will humble you. At this point Jonah was sick of it all. He travelled all that way to escape God, spent three days in the intestine of a fish, finally had the courage to preach to the people of Nineveh, and what did he have to show for it? You might say that it was Jonah who had saved all the people of Nineveh, for without his input, they would have remained as they were, full of sin, and the target for which God would no doubt eventually destroy. But Jonah in this sense, while only an instrument of his God, is still the saviour of his enemy, for it is his words and his delivery of those words to the people of Nineveh that convinces them to convert. But Jonah didn't see it this way. The people of Nineveh were a wicked people to him, and the city which sat within the country of Assyria were enemies of his home Israel. So it's no wonder he felt so bitter about the whole thing. With their destruction, it would have been a victory for Israel, but that was denied of him now. Jonah actually tells God that it was one of the reasons why he'd fled in the first place, because he knew God would spare his enemies if they all converted and bowed before him. It illustrates the point that God is known for his mercy, that his own prophet would not wish to carry out his command, because he knew that his God would, in a sense, be too good towards his enemies. Perhaps the reason for Jonah wanting God to destroy the people of Nineveh wasn't just because they were an enemy of Israel, but because they also fit with his own sense of moral justification. The people of Nineveh, in Jonah's eyes, were heathens. They were fiends, a people who had only just found God and yet had carried his favour just like that. No, for Jonah, they deserved to die, and God's unwillingness to follow through with his promise only confused Jonah, who had been so fixated on their destruction that he didn't realise there was another way to resolve their differences. Additionally, you might say that Jonah was concerned for his reputation. After all, he'd come into Nineveh preaching that God was going to destroy them, and when he didn't, it undermined Jonah, and may have led some to believe him to be a false prophet. Still sulking in the desert, God would proceed to scold Jonah when he began complaining that the vine had now been eaten by the worm, leaving him in the wake of the hot sun, burning under the warm winds. His God was dismayed that Jonah was so concerned about himself and the vine, and not more concerned with the conditions and lives of the 120,000 people of Nineveh, whose lives they had just both saved. Again, in this case, we see Jonah humbled, as his silence before God's reprimanding demonstrates his own guilt at having such a selfish and inward introspective. Let me know who you'd like to see next on the Biblical Stories Explained series. As always guys, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you've enjoyed this video, and don't forget to subscribe. Until the next time.